presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, from Alaska to Spain in the Game of the Week with Brad Ollison. Jamont Gordon and Carlos Suarez spoke to us before their matchup on the court. Valeri Likodi is a talented three-point shooter, while Stefan Lazme is the king of the paint. And of course, we bring you the MVP and top three plays of the week. Alaska is evidently a land of great shooters. After Trajan Langdon, the 2008 final for MVP with Seska Moscow, nicknamed the Alaskan Assassin, his natural heir is Brad Ollison from North Pole, a small town in the center of state, now guard of FC Barcelona. Perhaps the climate of Alaska contributes to creating this skill set. Outside, there's really, in the winters, when it's 30 below, dark, cold, long nights, you know, what else is there to do? So, you know, obviously I was in the gym a lot, you know, working on my shooting, and I think that's contributed a lot to being a good shooter. Brad will turn 31 in April, and he came to Spain in the summer of 2005. Many players who have crossed the pond have not adapted well to life in Europe, but Brad has always lived in Spain and feels at home. Americans sometimes don't want to, you know, they don't want to change, you know. And it's just about, you know, trying new things and, you know, uh, adapting to the culture and just uh, embracing it, I guess. Basketball is like music. It's the same all over the world. The only difference is in the details. American basketball and European basketball are a little different, but, you know, when it comes down to it, it's, uh, it's basketball. So, you know, we just have to adapt and obviously, you know, everyone's trying to make a living over here and, you know, trying to do what they continue to do, what they love, you know, what they did as, as a child. I've been here, I think this is my eighth year overseas and, you know, it's every year it gets easier and easier to adapt. As a player, Brad is a self-made man. Before playing at the top, he spent several seasons at a lower level, which helped shape his future. I didn't. I guess develop as early as some other players and uh, by playing in the lower leagues I got to work on my own skills. I got to, I had to do my own thing day in and day out. When I was ready to make that jump I made that jump at the perfect time and you know I think that helped me uh, uh, greatly. Brad has topped an average of 40% in three-point shooting in nine of his 12 seasons from 2002-03. Natural talent obviously helps, but the real reason for this success is another. Uh, the secret is having good teammates, you know. Obviously, there's more than, you know, just shooting the ball. There's, you know, before getting a good screen, getting a good pass. But obviously, when you're shooting, you know, just uh, having confidence to take the shot and, you know, having, having your legs under you. With all this ability added to his experience, Brad became one of the best sixth men of the entire Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. I do like coming off the bench. I try to bring a little bit of energy and, you know, you can read the first seven minutes and see how the game's going. When you come in, you can kind of decide, you know, am I going to be a really aggressive or am I going to, you know, do different things? Or, or if one guy on the other team is hot, you know, hey, I need to go in and stop that guy. Maybe I need to, you know, just pressure the ball. Maybe it's, maybe it's little things. FC Barcelona hosted Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul in the game of the week and started well with Ante Tomic, top scorer of the game. The Turkish team did react, but then came the outstanding moment of Bostian Nakba in the third quarter when he increased the gap to 20 points.
In the last period, Barcelona controlled the score, eventually winning their ninth top 16 game in a row by 93-73. Dunkers or shooters are the ones that always get the headlines. Accelerate. Or maybe the top rebounders and blockers. But the players that do well in steals, a key move in interpreting a game well, often get left out. One of the best stealers is most definitely Jamal Gordon. It's something I always did ever since I was younger. It's something I can't explain. It, it, I kind of just be in the right place at the right time, uh, breeding your, your opponent, knowing what they can and what they can't do. Just paying attention to details, and that's the most important thing. Some players are great at getting steals, but some players are not a great defender, so I try to do both, and being a great defender still just comes some type of way. The American guard of Anadolu FS Istanbul, who is approaching his 30s, has vast experience in the European game after arriving in November 2007. He had the highest steal percentage in the 2011-12 season with 1.81 steals per game when playing for Galatasaray Istanbul. I play uh, four different teams, so I've been in all types of defensive schemes. And I just try to stay in front of my man, uh, and my hand just, it's something it's natural, it's, it's nothing I can explain. I just go out and just try to play good defense. In this case, talent alone is not enough. A player needs a deep understanding of the game and of the players themselves. Watching a lot of basketball, thinking about what I'd do if I was on the offense end in certain situations in another game, knowing when the player can't go left or right, or knowing when he like to dribble, when he like to shoot with a certain hand. You can see one player, he maybe play like another player that you know before, so you can kind of just put it together like that. So knowing your opponent is the most important thing. The opponents that Lucas has studied well are not only his rivals in the same position. Often, he targets players in other roles. And this is one of the few occasions when cunning can get the better over height. I get a lot from the big men when they go up to shoot. They're worried about getting their shot blocked. I go low and steal it real quick. Gordon's reputation as a bull thief continues to grow. This season, he produced 21 steals in the regular season and has collected 16 in the top 16 so far. Difficult not to give him the credit he deserves, considering also his small margin of error. basketball player you need freedom regardless because if you're thinking too much instead of you getting a steal you're gonna get a foul mostly I don't get them on ball I usually get them off the ball so I don't take too many risks when I go to get a steal I usually get it He's a very versatile forward that made his debut in Euroleague at the age of just 17. Unicaja Malaga's Carlos Suarez has learned to use all of his 203 centimetres over the years and is a mismatch specialist close to the basket. My strong points are intensity, 
giving it all on the court, rebounding on both ends, and a little bit of outside shooting. I can also play in the low post. I'm a bit big, so I want to use that size to overcome other players. When I play four, I like to use my outside shooting or try to be a bit faster than my defender. Carlos is a humble player who readily appreciates the strengths of his opponents, especially two well-known opponents, where he sees some of himself. Someone in my position can be Rudy Fernandez. He is a player who does a lot of things. He scores, defends. Despite not being corpulent, he uses his body very well and is very smart on the court. Andres Nocioni is a tough player who can do a lot of things. He's one of the players I like best. They are strong players that push him to perform even better, which is absolutely necessary, considering the crucial stages of the competition are approaching. We have improved the level in the top 16. The teams that have impressed me the most are FC Barcelona and Olympiacos. The level in this group is deadly. I think even as many as three teams from this group could be in the final four. Now at 27 years of age, Carlos is playing his fifth EuroLeague season, having won three different jerseys. The first was in Madrid with Estudiantes in 2004, which was one of his best seasons at this level. Then, after a five-year absence in EuroLeague, he returned in 2010, but this time with Real Madrid. When I was in Estudiantes, there was not a big pressure regarding results. After that, I went to Real Madrid, where you did have that pressure. I have been to two Final Fours, but now I am in a new team that consistently makes the top 16 year after year. Carlos was born in Aranjuez, just outside the Spanish capital, and when he was young, he developed a passion for something else away from sport. I have a passion for the movies, also football. The last movie I've seen is American Hustle, and it's pretty good. I recommend it. Unicaja Malaga guard Zoran Dragic earned the B-win MVP for round nine of the top 16. For Zoran, this is the first time in his two Turkish Airlines EuroLeague seasons. Unicaja defeated Anadolu FS Istanbul 83-75 at home, thanks to Dragic's performance, and are now alone in third place in Group E. The 24-year-old native of Ljubljana scored 24 points, tying his EuroLeague career high by hitting four of six shots, both by two and three pointers, and netting four of the five free throws he earned. Adding four steals, another personal record, three assists and three rebounds, Zoran reached a performance index rating of 30, the highest of the week and his third personal best in this unforgettable night. Although this is his first season in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, Valeri Likudi has managed to carve out an important role for Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar. A terrific shooter who reached basketball's elite competition starting from very afar. I had a very long journey uh, since my burn. I was born in Rostov on Don. City. Then we moved to Moscow, and then at the age of 10, I started to play basketball. I started to play on uh, Sundays, just for fun, with uh, everybody from the school. He was discovered by Seska Moscow, who signed him up to their junior team, and this is where he learned many of the basics, at a stage when Valeri had to adapt his game on the court to his unusual growth spurt. I grew up one summer for 18 centimeters. When I go to the camp, my parents say bye like this, and then when they meet me, they say hi like this. 
I was uh, the tallest in the junior team. Yes, and start to play back to the basket. But then everybody starts to grow and I become, you know, like normal medium. <laughs> Once he was moved outside of the perimeter, he discovered that his biggest strength was his shooting from long distance. His stats speak for themselves. He is currently the most consistent three-point shooter with an incredible 65.4% in the top 16. I practice it a lot every day, like not less than 100 shots. His ability to always be in the right place at the right time, his precision and confidence, and his speed of execution are all exceptional. He makes the impossible seem so easy, as we have just seen. It was the last seconds I saw it on the board, and my friend passed me. I have nothing to do, just to shut it in the gym. It was a lucky shot, <laughs> for sure. In Krasnodar, basketball is a very popular sport. The Basket Hall Arena is always full, and there is one very special fan always present in the crowd that can easily be recognized by his unusual beard. The most famous, uh, maybe, fan of Russia. He all the time uh, meet us from the airport, uh, everywhere, in the games, before the game, after the game. Basketball is his day job, but Valeri has other talents, and we have to take his word for it. In Russia we call it uh, shashlik. It's a uh, barbecue, regular barbecue, like everybody cook. So, but I think I'm a profi in this case. I take uh, wood, burn it, before I make meat or maybe chicken, something like this, in special sauce. Then uh, put it on a barbecue, cook it and give it to my friends, to my family. On the court or in the kitchen, Valeri Likuri puts passion into everything he does, like a real artist. Like you playing on the stage, the same. You play for the people, uh, for camera. If you do something like a robot, it's not interesting, but if you do something great, you know, great movement, great dance, people like it. That's what we're playing for, for victory and for fun, for interesting. Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar received Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv on Friday. Valeri scored the three-pointer for the first double-digit advantage early in the second quarter. Brunoslav Simon, top scorer with 23 points, started a thrilling finale by taking the score to 67-63. Then Ricky Hickman responded with a three-pointer. Again, Simon scored from beyond the arc, but the game was not over yet. David Blue tried to win the game with eight seconds to play. His mistake gave Lokomotiv their fourth win, 78-75, and fourth place in Group F. Panathinaikos Athens' is Stefan Lasme likes the paint. This trait is quite uncommon in modern basketball, which is why Stefan is universally appreciated as a very consistent player, both in offense but above all in defense. Technically, I really want to. I don't, I don't think of myself as an offensive player. I think of myself as a defensive player first, and I don't think there's that many people who want to play defense first. A style of play that eventually earned him some acknowledgements last year when he won the Best Defender Award. To be honest, most of the places I play, I, I got Defensive Player of the Year. So since I've been in EuroLeague, it was a kind of a personal goal of mine. I stopped thinking about it the last two years. And when I got it last year, I just brushed it off. 
Stéphane was born in Port Gentil, the second biggest city of Gabon, where he started his career. First, I would play soccer for a while until I was 15, and then I grew a little faster 15. And now uh, I got introduced to basketball from a coach from my high school. He just called my name on the street and just asked me if I wanted to play basketball. He arrived in Europe in 2008 when he was 26. This is his fourth Turkish Airlines Euroleague season and he has very fond memories of all three cities where he played. Belgrade, you know, it was my first time in Europe and uh, my first time getting adjusted to the culture. So it was a real shocker. It took me about four, four or five months to get adjusted. Tel Aviv. You know, so it's Israel. It's different than everywhere else. It's kind of Americanized, but it's different. The rules and culture are different. I mean, I think Athens so far has been the most relaxing spot to get adjusted to. I mean, the people are great. Uh, the organization is wonderful. Everything is going smoothly. This season, he has contributed greatly to the success of the Greens, averaging a performance index rating of just under 12, which is higher than 14 in the top 16 alone. The icing on the cake came against arch-rivals Olympiakos Pireos, where he managed an index rating of 25, which was also important because it helped the team win. I mean, if you play for Pantanacos, you don't really have time to think about index performing. Small, they, they, make a, they put a big accent on the team basketball. But, you know, knowing that I play good that game personally and uh, also to beat Olympiacos at home with our fans was a really good feeling. When Stefan is on the floor, everybody gets excited because they know there are some big blocks in store. Timing, timing, because, you know, I used to think it's because, I mean, when I was a little younger, I used to think it was because I jump high, but... I usually don't go get them up there. I'll, I time it. Blocking is something he especially likes. I feel great. I mean, it's a confidence booster for me, for the, um, for the team. You know, I guess it gives us energy. And, um, you know, we, we, we live for that. We want, we want little plays that give us energy so we can just push a little bit more. And there is a second reason why the crowd loves him. This time at the other end of the floor. However, here he needs a little bit of help. For that little half a second that you're in the air, you know, you feel really great. And especially when you have a passer like Yamantidis, when you jump, you know, the pass is just so perfect that you actually feel like for a second you fly a little bit. But of the two, Stefan has no doubts about what he prefers and what is best for the team. Block, man. Block, you know, you, you feel like you have a bigger impact than the dunk. dunk. Dunks happen. You know, a lot of players can dunk, but a block, especially if it's a big stop or at a certain point in the game where you really need it, you, I mean, it feels great. It feels great for the team, especially. Now let's check out the top three plays of the week. Number three, Barcelona, Spain. Lightning strike from Barcelona. Costas Papa Nicolau, Juan Carlos Navarro, Papa Nicolau, Bostia Nakba. Teamwork at its finest. A huge fast break jam from Barcelona. Lovely touch here from Navarro. And then Papa Nicolau into the stride of Nakba. Number two, Belgrade, Serbia. Bayern Munich possession, Yassin Ibihi goes up to score, but Terence Kinsey comes like a whirlwind to blow him away. A big win for Partizan on Thursday night, and look at this from Kinsey. And the number one play of the week, Athens, Greece. There's still a lot for James Giss to do, but he breezes past three defenders. Explosive play, that is how to finish a slam. The Audi Dome of Munich will be the stage of the top 16 round 10 game of the week. FC Bayern and Real Madrid clash in a crucial contest for the home team as they attempt to keep their hopes of advancing to the quarter-final playoffs alive and to make history. With a win, Real Madrid will advance to the next stage with four games still to play. But the other big goal is to finish first in Group F. In the game played in Madrid, the home team routed the squad of coach Sverislav Pesic, 
taking a decisive lead in the third quarter when they scored 41 points, too shy of the all-time record, which belongs to Maccabi Tel Aviv from the 2009-10 season. Six players scored in double figures for Real Madrid, who scored 12 of the 27 attempts from long distance, led by 24 points collected by Rudy Fernandez. Bayern, who drained half of the 28 shots from downtown, had 22 points and six assists from their scoring leader, Malcolm Delaney. A great night of basketball is expected in Munich next week, where NFC Bayern and Real Madrid will face off in the top 16 round 10 game of the week. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.